It's like a jukebox in there, isn't it? Actually, it's more like a rock concert. 350 cubic inches, 5.7 litres of V8 engine. Plenty of noise and plenty of power. You know, if you relied on the story of the Chevrolet Corvette for your American history, you'd be forgiven for thinking that not much happened between the years of 1968 and 1982, because that is the production timeline of the C3 Corvette Stingray. And to the casual observer, the car remained largely the same during that time. Actually, there were some quite significant changes. Changes which make early models super valuable these days. Changes which actually toned down the driving experience towards 1980 and towards the end of production in 1982. And changes which, thanks to American emissions laws at the time, meant much less power, much less power for the C3 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. Less power and higher fuel consumption from what was essentially the same engine put a downward curve in the C3 Corvette's timeline. However, the changes on the outside were more promising. New aerodynamic spoilers front and rear, thinner, lighter body panels, and this 1980 model year was the first time we saw the now characteristic Corvette fiberglass rear leaf springs. They say you should never meet your pinups, and for me, the C3 Corvette Stingray was a pinup. As a kid, when I played car capers, I always wanted to roll a double six and win this car. I built a plastic monogram model of this Corvette Stingray that I still have today. And now I'm sat here staring at figures that are possibly less than impressive in the muscle car world. I'm looking at a, a speedo with a, a heady 85 miles per hour top speed. And I'm wondering if I perhaps picked the wrong muscle car to be my pinup. But then this. That is American for stick it in drive, plant the gas pedal, and let me leave 11s on the road. You can only leave one instead of 11s though, because the fuel tank isn't big enough for two. That's what it's saying. Gratefully, this is a classic car review, which means I can concentrate on the experience and not whether this car is practical for commuting or for toll booths. And with any American car, it's all about the experience. The feeling of driving an American muscle car on roads that weren't designed for it, and in a decade that has tried its best to shake off such dinosaurs of automotive history and change its priorities. I'm gonna get a complex next time I arrive at the petrol station in a normal modern car because I'll cease to be that person that everyone wants to talk to. Cars like this make people want to talk about cars. Even people who hate cars, like Toyota Prius drivers, for example. Actually, maybe not them. The Chevrolet Corvette is as iconic to American motoring as the E-Type Jaguar is to British motoring. And as far as automotive comparisons go, that's a fairly short one. The steering isn't that precise. The V8 engine makes more noise than go. The ride is harsh in this country. There's no boot lid, no hatchback. It's very impractical. This particular model comes from a time when General Motors was throwing every bit of available technology and marketing at the Corvette desperately trying to hang on to the coattails of the golden age of American muscle. 1972, this wasn't. But you know what, this car was built to eat up the miles on Route 66. It comes from a, a time and a place that history has down as one of the most cool, most cult times and places to have existed in. Sitting in this red jukebox cabin, I wanna be watching movies through the windscreen. I want a clip on burger tray on the outside of my door. And that is what driving around in a C3 Corvette Stingray is all about. That is classic motoring. It's back to the 80s.